Most people start a budget with big plans, hoping to finally get their money under control. They set limits on spending, promise to cut back on things they enjoy, and plan to save more. But after a few days or weeks, sticking to that budget feels impossible. They overspend, feel guilty, and often give up. This is a common story, and it happens because many budgets are too strict or unrealistic. The problem isn't just about numbers, it's about making a budget that actually fits your life. In this video, I will show you how to budget your money that works for you. A good budget isn't about restricting every dollar, it's about having a plan for your money that helps you reach your goals and still enjoy life. By the end of this video, you'll have practical steps to build a budget that you can follow and that truly makes sense for your lifestyle. Number 1. What's a budget? And why you need one? A budget is simply a plan for your money. It's a way to decide how much you'll spend, save, and put toward your goals each month. Instead of guessing where your money goes, a budget helps you make sure every dollar has a purpose. Think of it as a map that guides your financial decisions, helping you stay on track so you don't run out of money before payday. Having a budget doesn't mean you can't spend on fun things. In fact, a budget lets you plan for both needs and wants, making sure you can still enjoy life while reaching your financial goals. When you have a budget, you're in control of your money, which reduces stress. You're no longer surprised by bills or overspending, and you can save up for things you really care about, like a vacation, a new gadget, or even a big dream like buying a home. In short, a budget helps you live within your means, avoid debt, and move closer to the life you want. It's not about restriction. It's about creating a sense of financial freedom, so you spend without worry and save with confidence. Number two, know your starting point, tracking your spending. Before you can make a budget, you need to know where your money is going right now. This means tracking your spending. Tracking is simply paying attention to every dollar you spend. Many people don't realize how quickly small purchases add up, whether it's daily coffee, eating out, or small online purchases. By seeing exactly where your money goes, you'll get a clear picture of your habits and know where you might want to cut back. To start tracking, choose a method that feels easy for you. Some people like using budgeting apps that automatically show spending from their bank account or credit card. Others prefer writing down expenses in a notebook or using a spreadsheet. You could also keep all your receipts for a week and then add them up. Whichever way you choose, be consistent. Tracking your spending for even one month can reveal patterns and habits you didn't notice before. Once you have a record of your spending, look over it and try to spot areas where you may be overspending. Are there categories where you're spending more than you expected, like groceries, eating out, or subscriptions? By knowing exactly how much you're spending, you'll have a realistic starting point for your budget. This first step of tracking is crucial because it shows you what you're actually doing with your money right now, not just what you think you're doing. It's the foundation for creating a budget that's truly personalized to you. Number three, setting clear, personal goals. Once you know where your money is going, it's time to set some goals. Goals make budgeting feel more motivating and meaningful because now you're working towards something you truly want. But these goals shouldn't be vague, like save more or spend less. They should be clear and personal, so you feel inspired to stick with them. Think of short-term goals, things you want to achieve in the next few months. For example, maybe you want to save $500 for an emergency fund, pay off a credit card, or have money for a small vacation. Short-term goals help you feel quick wins, which can boost your confidence. Then think about longer-term goals like saving for a down payment on a house, building a bigger emergency fund, or paying off student loans. These goals might take a year or more, but having them gives you a direction for your budgeting. When setting these goals, use the SMART method. Make them specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. For example, instead of, I want to save money, Try, I want to save $1,000 in the next six months for a new laptop. This way, you know exactly what you're working toward and can measure your progress along the way. Setting clear, personal goals makes budgeting feel less like a chore and more like a plan for reaching the things you really want in life. Number four, choose a budgeting method that works for you. Now that you have your spending history and goals, it's time to pick a budgeting method that works for you. There isn't one's perfect way to budget. Different methods work for different people. Here are three popular budgeting styles you can try to see which fits you best. 
50 hours, 30 minutes, and 20 seconds budget. This method is simple and helps you balance needs, wants, and savings. You spend 50% of your income on needs, like rent, bills, and groceries, 30% on wants, like dining out, hobbies, or shopping, and put 20% towards savings or debt payments. This method is ideal if you want a straightforward way to budget without tracking every single expense. Zero-based budgeting. With this approach, every dollar you make is assigned a purpose until there's no money left over. So, if you make $3,000 a month, you plan exactly how you'll use all $3,000, whether it's for bills, fun, savings, or debt. This method works well if you want complete control over where your money goes. It can be more time-consuming, but it's a great way to keep track of every dollar. Envelope system, or digital envelopes, in the traditional envelope system, you divide your cash into envelopes for different spending categories, like groceries, entertainment, and dining out. When an envelope is empty, you can't spend more in that category until the next month. Now, many apps offer digital versions of the envelope system, which makes it easy to track on your phone. This method is great if you often overspend and need physical or visual reminders to stick to your budget. Don't be afraid to adjust or mix methods until you find one that helps you control your money without feeling stressed. The best budget is the one you can stick to comfortably. Number five, make adjustments and review monthly. Creating a budget is only the beginning. To make it work, you need to review and adjust it every month. Life changes all the time and so do your spending needs. Some months may have extra expenses like birthdays, car repairs, or holiday shopping. By checking your budget regularly, you can make sure it's still realistic and useful. At the end of each month, compare what you actually spent with what you planned in your budget. Did you spend more on groceries than expected? Or maybe you had a surprise medical bill? Don't worry if things didn't go exactly as planned. The goal isn't perfection, it's progress. Use these reviews to make small changes for the next month. For example, if you're always spending more than expected on eating out, consider increasing that category a little or setting a personal limit on how many times you'll eat out next month. If you find yourself with extra money, you can decide whether to save it, pay off debt, or put it towards something fun. This monthly review keeps your budget flexible and realistic. It helps you learn about your spending habits and see what's working. Over time, You'll become better at predicting your expenses and adjusting as needed. Remember, a good budget changes with you. It's not a strict rule, but a tool to help you manage your money in a way that feels right for your life. Number six, avoid common budgeting pitfalls. Even with the best intentions, it's easy to fall into common budgeting traps. One big mistake is making a budget that's too strict. If you don't allow yourself any room for fun, like an occasional coffee or night out, you'll likely get frustrated and break the budget. Avoid this by adding a small, fun category to enjoy guilt-free spending. Another pitfall is underestimating expenses. It's easy to think you'll spend less than you actually do, especially on things like groceries or gas. Try adding a small buffer or miscellaneous category to cover unexpected costs. This way, your budget stays realistic and doesn't collapse because of one surprise expense. Finally, don't beat yourself up if you go over budget in one area. Many people feel discouraged after small mistakes and give up entirely. Remember, budgeting is about improving over time, not about being perfect right away. If you overspend, look at why it happened and adjust for next month. Budgeting is a learning process and it's okay to make changes as you go. By avoiding these pitfalls, you'll be more likely to stick with your budget reach your goals, and feel good about your money choices. A budget that works isn't about restricting every dollar. It's about building a plan that helps you manage your money without stress. Remember, budgeting is a journey, not a one-time task. Small adjustments and patience will help you make progress over time. Start small, be consistent, and don't get discouraged by setbacks. With these steps, you'll find that budgeting can lead to financial freedom and help you achieve the life you want. Now, if you want to learn how to achieve financial success, then watch this video next. If you made it to this point in the video, please like and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.